Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guide. <clears throat> Thought I'd do a quick walk around here uh, of the 2019 Ford F-150, which uh, in today's orange man parlance is huge. I'm a pretty big guy. I'm 6'3", I'm 200 something pounds. And these 1500s are so big, they make me feel small. I'm gonna show you one thing. The height of the bed wall. It is roughly, roughly up to my belly button. Now again, I'm six feet three and I'm trying to like touch the bed here. I can do it, but not easily. Uh, these things have just gotten to be outlandishly proportioned. Um, so much, in fact, that looky here. There's a step ladder to help you get up into the thing, along with what I like to call the Metamucil pole, so that you can have something to hold on to while while you make yourself while you make your way up into the bed. Uh, I mean, it's functionally it's very very interesting uh, that they've managed to do all this stuff, but law to mighty, it's a big sucker. It's a nice sucker though. Check out the uh, power rear sliding glass, and again, you need that because, particularly with the crew cab configuration. Uh, you're not going to be able to just reach your arm back there and open it up. Uh, of course, it has an aluminum body. You've probably heard all about that, uh, which Ford did to chop a few hundred pounds off the weight in order to uh, increase the fuel economy of the vehicle. Um, unfortunately, the fuel economy difference really isn't that tremendous. It's about three miles per gallon, which is fine, but it's not that big a deal personally. I'd still rather have a steel body truck uh, just because when you damage an aluminum body, it costs more to fix and it's more vulnerable to needing to be fixed in the first place. Aluminum is just more fragile than steel. Um, and I have a fear that uh, ultimately as these aluminum bodied vehicles, not just the F-Truck, but generally get into broader circulation that you're going to see insurance costs go up because body repair costs are going up as a result of that. Um, so, as with anything, there are pros and there are cons. The body is lighter and you don't have to worry as much about exterior panel perforation from rust as you do with a steel bodied vehicle. However, it's more expensive to fix uh, and it's more vulnerable to being damaged. Now, let's look at some of the really good stuff about this truck. At least I think it's pretty good stuff. One thing is the uh, outside keyboard uh, entry, which is unique to Ford and Lincoln vehicles. Uh, Ford has been doing that for a long time. I think they did it as long ago as the 80s. And it's kind of nice in case you do lose your key fob, you can still enter the vehicle uh, by manually punching in your code. Uh, and I'm glad they have not gotten rid of that. As far as stuff that I'm glad they've added, they have added, this is a limited now top of the line F-150, so this is by no means standard equipment, but let me show you what you got. You got massaging seats, buddy. Yeah, multi-contour massaging seats for the driver and the passenger. Heated massaging seats, what could be better? And you've got a panoply of luxury amenities. You've got, of course, automatic, uh, electronically controlled four-wheel drive, pretty much automatic everything. Um, it's not roughing it to drive a truck anymore, at least not uh, a nicely optioned out uh, F-150 Limited, which even has its own little VIN here and serial number, first limited production. This is number 0517. I'm not sure exactly how many total of these things are being produced. Um, anyway, I'll have a written rant up at epautos.com. Also, some of you watching this might be interested in the goings-on in France, which are not being covered much by the media in this country. Um, and in particular, the fact that uh, the, uh, the sans culottes over there, that is the peasants, are actually destroying the speed cameras. And the reason they're doing that, among other things, is that the government has decreed a 50 mile an hour maximum speed limit on a lot of France's highways, if you can imagine that. So it's even worse than what we had to put up with here in America when it was drive 55 from circa 1974 all the way to, I think it was about 1994 before that finally got repealed. The French have finally had enough. So I say vive la France, good for them. Uh, I think it's interesting that all the people who call the French the surrender monkeys and that they're a bunch of pussies, uh, I'll say this much for the French, at least they uh, will actually go out in the streets with the proverbial pitchforks and do something when they get screwed by the government, whereas Americans will sit around all day and watch football and accept whatever the government does to them. 
So, uh, end of rant for now. More at bdpautos.com. Thanks for watching, and we will catch up with you again soon.